In this video, we're going to learn a technique that can help us evaluate certain types of limits called L'Hopital's Rule. Now, the word of caution. Throughout this course, and in particular in this topic, we're going to be working with the symbols infinity and negative infinity. I want to make it perfectly clear that you cannot do any arithmetic with these symbols. You cannot add them, subtract them, multiply them, or divide them. So any statement like infinity minus infinity equals zero or infinity over infinity equals one is complete and total nonsense. And they statements like that will be severely penalized on any graded assignments. These transfinite numbers are not like finite numbers. We should only treat them in terms of limits. So for example, let's consider the limits, the limit as x approaches one from the right of x minus one over the natural log of two minus x or maybe the limit as x approaches infinity of two of x over the natural log of x, or the limit as x approaches zero of x times natural log of x. These are examples of what we call indeterminate forms. We cannot use the limit laws or any of the theorems that we've learned so far to be able to evaluate these limits. Now, there are some indeterminate forms that we learned how to evaluate back in Calc 1, but these are examples where those techniques would not help. So we need to do something else. So first of all, there's different types of indeterminate forms. If I look in the first example, so in part A, as x approaches 1 from the right, both the numerator and the denominator approach 0. So that's called an indeterminate form of type 0 over 0. While in B, both the numerator and the denominator approach either infinity or negative infinity. So we call that an indeterminate form of type infinity over infinity. And I see that I didn't write indeterminate correctly. Let me go ahead and change that. Good. Then in part C, the first factor x is going to 0, but the natural log of x as x approaches 0 from the right goes to negative infinity. So we call that an indeterminate form of type zero times infinity. And again, I see I'm having problems writing indeterminate. There we go. So the limit of an indeterminate form, you can't tell by just looking at it. Just because it's indeterminate doesn't mean the limit doesn't exist. It might exist, it might not exist. You have to do some more work. If it does exist, it may be infinite or finite. If it's finite, it may be any real number. So to help us understand the technique or to derive this L'Hopital's rule, we're gonna look at an extension of the mean value theorem called Cauchy's mean value theorem. And what it does is it takes two functions, f and g, that are continuous on a closed interval, a comma b, and they're differentiable in the interior, so the open interval, a comma b. And we're going to have this additional requirement that g prime of x not equal zero for any of the values of x between a and b. And if that's the case, then we can find a number c between a and b such that the ratio f prime of c over g prime of c 
equals the ratio of the difference f of b minus f of a over g of b minus g of a. And so uh, how does that make sense? Well, really to show that this is true or such a c exists, uh, we're really going to go back and use uh, an idea that we used to prove the original mean value theorem. We're going to create this helper function h of x. It's going to be defined in a special way. And the way we get this definition is we look at the cross products of these two ratios here. Uh, so I'll have f of x times the difference g of b minus g of a. Subtract g of x times the difference f of b minus f of a. And I won't go through the details, but we can see that this helper function has the same value at a and when x equals b. It's going to be f of a times g of b minus g of a times f of b. And moreover, uh, this helper function, it's going to be continuous on the closed interval, and it's going to be differentiable on the interior. So it satisfies all the conditions to be able to use Rolle's theorem. And the conclusion from Rolle's theorem is that there's a number c between a and b where h prime of c equals 0. That's because, again, h of a equals h of b. And that's the c that we're looking for, because if I set f prime of c times g of b minus g of a minus g prime of c times f of b minus f of a. If I set that equal to zero and do some algebra, I get the result that I'm looking for in Cauchy's mean value theorem. So let's see if we can use that to help us uh, derive a technique to calculate the limit of an indeterminate form. We'll look at the simplest case uh, where we have f of x over g of x. It'll be a zero over zero indeterminate form. And uh, we're going to assume we have differentiable functions and that g prime uh, at a or really near a. But since it, they're differentiable, they're going to be continuous, right? So um, that means uh, it's sufficient to say that g prime at a is not equal to zero. Uh, and so then if I want to calculate this limit. Well, if x is close to a, then there's going to be a number c between x and a such that this ratio holds true. All right. And let me just update that. So number c that a is less than, well, I don't know which one is smaller, so we'll just say between a and x, where we have those, this ratio holding true. Now, think about this, as x gets closer to a, then c has got to be getting closer to a too. So if x gets arbitrarily close to a, this number c is also going to get arbitrarily close to a. All right, well, how does that help us with our original limit? Well, the limit of f of x over g of x would be the same as the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a over g of x minus g of a. And that's because f of a equals zero and g of a equals zero. I ch changed the way I, I wrote this, but I didn't change its value because I'm just subtracting zero from the top and zero from the bottom. And so then that's going to give me, well, according to Cauchy's mean value theorem, the limit as x approaches a of f prime of c over g prime of c. But since c approaches a as x approaches a, I can conclude that the limit as x approaches a of f of x over g of x will be the limit as x approaches a of f prime of x over g prime of x. And that brings us to L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule says that if we have differentiable functions f and g, 
g prime of x is not zero on an open interval containing a, except possibly at a. Um, and further, suppose that we either have an indeterminate form of type zero over zero or infinity over infinity, then the limit as x approaches a of f of x over g of x is the same as the limit as x approaches a of f prime of x over g prime of x, provided that this limit exists. Now it may approach infinity or negative infinity, we still consider that limit existing. Now this technique where we take the limit of the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom is only valid for indeterminate forms. So we have to be very careful with that. But it does work fine for one-sided limits. And then just as a reminder, in this technique, we take the derivative of the top separate from the derivative of the bottom. We're not using the quotient rule. So let's look at, at some examples. Our friend here from calculus one, the limit as x approaches zero of sine of x over x. We were able to use the squeeze theorem in calculus one to show that this limit equals one. Let's just make sure our new technique works and gets us the same value. So if I use L'Hopital's rule, I can see that this is an indeterminate zero over zero indeterminate form. So take the derivative of the top over the derivative of the bottom. That'll give me the limit as x approaches zero of cosine of x. And since cosine is continuous, I just use direct substitution. Cosine of zero equals one. Let's look at another example. Here I have sinh of x minus one over the polynomial x squared plus two x minus three. And I'm going to take the limit as x approaches one. Now this is another zero over zero indeterminate form as x approaches one, sinh of x minus one approaches zero, and x squared plus two x minus three also approaches zero. So let's apply L'Hopital's rule, take the derivative of the top, the derivative of the bottom. I'll get the limit then as x approaches one of cosh of x over two x plus two. Now, both of those are continuous at, at uh, x equals one. In fact, I can say that uh, what is cosh of one? I, think I made a mistake here with this answer. It should be cosh of one. Cosh of one would be uh, one half of e plus one over e. And when I put in two here, I'll get over four. And so this is going to equal one eighth parentheses e plus one over e. So I'm going to have to correct the other slides because I have the wrong answer. So let me just skip those. I guess I'll need to just come back and fix those. All right, so here I have in my third example an infinity over infinity indeterminate form. So I'll apply L'Hopital's rule, uh, but that doesn't really help me because I still have an infinity over infinity um, condition here, indeterminate form. So let me apply L'Hopital's rule again. Still have infinity over infinity. So one more time. And now the e to the x will divide out and I'll find the limit value to be two thirds.
All right. Now we can also use Locretel's rule in some cases when we have indeterminate products. That is where we have two functions and uh, the limit of one as x approaches a is zero. And the limit of the other as x approaches a is either plus or minus infinity. And so the way we handle this is we, re we rewrite the product f times g as a ratio. We either write it as f over 1 over g or g over 1 over f. If I have f over 1 over g, uh, since g is going to infinity, uh, this is going to be a 0 over 0 indeterminate product. And if this limit as x approaches a of 1 over f exists, um, then that would give me an infinity over infinity indeterminate form. So as an example, let's look at uh, one of the examples we examined at the beginning of this lesson, which was the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of x times natural log of x. So I'll rewrite that as natural log of x over 1 over x. Take the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. And now I'll apply L'Hopital's rule. The derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. The derivative of 1 over x, well, that's like x to the minus 1. So apply the power rule. And you'd have negative 1 x to the negative 2 power. That's the same as negative 1 over x squared. And so you can simplify this in a number of different ways. You could multiply top and bottom by x squared. I think that would have been the simplest way. But what I did was first uh, take out a common factor of 1 over x. And then uh, I realized that 1 over 1 over x is just x. So this would be the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of negative x, which is just 0. So indeterminate differences. If I have a limit of the difference of two functions, and the two functions uh, are going to uh, either positive infinity or negative infinity, I might be able to do some algebra and rewrite it as uh, a ratio where I get an indeterminate form. And that's what's really important. If after you write it as a ratio, you don't have an indeterminate form, then you're going to have to use something else or maybe write it in a different way. If you don't get to an indeterminate form, you can't use L'Hopital's rule. So let's look at this example. I have cotangent of x minus 2 over x. And there's a number of ways that I could write this as a single fraction. I'm going to go ahead and change cotangent of x to cosine of x over sine of x. And then I'll write that with a common denominator, x sine of x. So now let's just verify. The bottom, or the denominator goes to 0. The top is also going to 0. So I have a 0 over 0 indeterminate form. I can use L'Hopital's rule. I'll have to use the product rule with the first term here. And then I'll also have to use the product rule in the denominator. Now, after I do that, the bottom is still going to 0. Uh, but the top is not going to 0. In fact, let me collect some like terms here. And so um, the top is actually going to negative 1. And so this is going to go to either positive infinity or negative infinity. Since x is approaching 0 through positive values, then the sine x plus x cosine x is always going to be a positive number. Uh, and so um, an x sine x will be a positive number, but negative x sine x will be negative. Negative cosine of x will be negative. So this is a negative number over a positive number. So it's going to approach negative infinity. Now, note that when I got to this point, I may be tempted 
to try to use L'Hopital's rule again, but we can't. It's not an indeterminate form. So we just have to stop and do something else. And in this case, we really didn't need to do anything else because we were able to, to identify that the limit uh, was negative infinity. So the last way that we can get an indeterminate form is, and again, I'm just having such a hard time writing indeterminate because it's not indeterminate. It's just indeterminate. So indeterminate powers. All right. Let me just make this correction one more time and then I'll have to correct the slides later. Um, so we're gonna have a function raised to the power of a function. We'll take the limit as x approaches a, and then we're gonna have a couple of cases. We're either going to have both of those functions going to zero, and so we'll call that type zero raised to the power of zero, or we'll have the base going to infinity while the exponent goes to zero. That'll be infinity to the zero power. Or we could have the base going to one while the exponent goes to plus or minus infinity. And that's going to be of type one to the power of infinity. Now, it should not surprise us that our technique for evaluating this is going to involve logarithms. Whenever we had a function raised to a function like this and wanted to calculate its derivative, for example, we would use logarithmic differentiation. So, Here's a classic example. I'd like to calculate the limit as x approaches zero from the right of x raised to the power of x. Well, I'm going to let y equal x to the power of x and take the log of both sides and use a log property to bring this exponent out in front as a multiplier. This is what exactly what we did with logarithmic differentiation. But now what I'm going to do is take the limit as x approaches zero from the right of, well, the natural log of y, or this expression, x natural log of x. Now we did this in a previous example, so I'm not going to go through all of the steps again. We found that the limit was going to be zero. Now that's not the answer for the question that we have now. This is an intermediate step. Because now I have to say, oh, well, that's the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of the natural log of y. What about the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of y? Well, there's a couple ways I can reason through this. One is to say, well, y equals e to the natural log of y. Because the natural log and the exponent are inverses of each other. So the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of x to the power of x, well, that's the same as the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of y. That would be the same as the limit as x approaches 0 should be from the right of e to the natural log of y. But because the exponential function is continuous, I can move the limit from the outside to inside the exponent. So I could say that's the same as e raised to the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of natural log of y, which is exactly what we found to be 0. So the limit value is going to be e to the power of 0, which we know is 1. One last example. We're going to take the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus 4x raised to the power of 1 over x. This is an indeterminate form of 1 to the infinity. 
So we're going to start the same way. We're going to let y equal 1 minus 4x raised to the power of 1 over x. Take the log of both sides and use a log property to bring the 1 over x as a multiplier. So I can just write that as natural log of 1 minus 4x all over x. So now if I want to take the limit of that ratio, I can apply L'Hopital's rule, right? Because this is going to be a 0 over 0 indeterminate form. As uh, x approaches 0, 1 minus 4x approaches 1, and natural log of 1 is 0. So the derivative of the natural log of 1 minus 4x, that'll be 1 over 1 minus 4x, then take the derivative of the inside, which is negative 4. And the derivative of x is just 1. So now I can just use direct substitution, replace x with a 0, and I get negative 4 for that limit. So that's the limit as x approaches 0 of natural log of y. What about the limit of the original function? Well, if the natural log of y approaches negative 4 as x goes to 0, then since the exponential function is continuous, I could just rewrite that as saying y must approach e to the negative 4. So you can see what I've done here is essentially I just put the natural log of y and negative 4 as an exponent into the exponential function. e to the natural log of y is y, and then e to the negative 4 is e to the negative 4. And so then the limit as x approaches 0 of the original function is e raised to the power of negative 4.